Hello, 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 my sassy soul sisters and friends. Welcome back. Stacy here. And tonight I wanted to share with you the Alana Fairchild Kali Oracle deck. I am super excited about this deck and I want to do a quick flip through and hopefully she has something to say to us and maybe she will talk to us. So I am first one we have here is Smash Shauna. I will do my best. I am sorry if I um, mispronounce any of the names. I will try my best. I will say it how my brain sees it. So we have Smash Shauna. And I think this is the one that I received in my box. Oh, and this is the back. Pretty purple. Big plum background with the skulls and the wings. Pretty cool. Or is it a flower? Then we have Vishvamara. Her third eye. Just very cool imagery. I really like the images. Then we have Kaladara. This one's beautiful. Oh. Kali Mahameya with a reflection and the lilies. Guna Tantrika. Troma Namo. Just like so wild. Dakshina. This gives me Egyptian vibes. I don't know what it is. If it, I think it's like the hands or something. Kali. Kapali. Just so beautiful and mystical and mysterious. Kadagra. That's how I'm saying. Six Bexies. Kundalina Shakti. The things we could do with four arms, ladies. The things we could do and accomplish. Just think about all we accomplish now if you had an extra set of arms. Daga Kalika. Again with the third eye. And the lightning in the background. Sorry, I didn't mean to shake you guys. 12, Kali Yantra. She's praying. 13, Yuga Shakti. And there she is with her famous tongue sticking out, nose ring and all, the third eye. 14, Badra. Kali. Again, just, I don't know what it is about her. I just think she's just so beautiful. Maybe it's the blue skin. I don't know. <laughs> it's just something. Mahavida. Mahikali. Then if we had six and eight arms. <laughs> Sup is done. Laundry's done. Works. Done. Everything's done. Done, 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 done. Blue Tara. She looks so peaceful. Like she's really just enjoying her day. Lalita Trepura Sandari. Nineteen, Bu <laughs> Buvan Ezravara. No, let's try it again. Buvanesvari, Buvanesvari. I don't know what my tongue's trying to say. But again, look at her third eye. It's like a jewel, like a ruby or a garnet. Twenty, Sinamasta. Um. Chinamasta. Twenty-one. 
Paravi Yogini. Dumavari. A lot of them with the third eye. And that's the skull that's on the back. The image of the skull. I'm calling them wings, but he could be in a flower too. I just noticed her choker. Bagalamuki. Is that a slug in her hand? A torch and something. Matani or Matanji. This one, she they depicted her green. And I don't know if you guys noticed the hand. There's a few where her hand, it's bloody, but it has the three and an S. Do you guys see the three and the S on there? The big three, the little S. If you know, you know. 25, Kamala Devi. Gorgeous. Oh my God, look at the colors in this one. 26, Shadashi. She's wearing her veil. And she has a third eye too. She has lots of cuff bracelets. Sri Bala. I like this. Beautiful pictures. Gorya, Kali. Side. Oh, Devi Makali. Oh, it's a babes. It's a blue babes. Thirty. Nitya, Kali. I don't know which is moon they explained what this image was. And I wish I was at elevated right now. <laughs> so I could tell you a little bit about it. Chumunda. This is so cool. Kalaratri. Another beautiful image. I don't know the the colors are like so vibrant. Anahara Kali. So pretty. Kuru Kula. Kuru Kura. Ooh, she's like a warrior princess right there. Kalika Tantrika. There we have my Egyptian vibes again. Love it. Atha of Kali. These cards are like a little thick too. Dama of Kali. There's her dark side and her light side. Just like all of us. It's all about the balance. Kama of Kali. Maksha of Kali. Matra Shakti. So broken. Broken pieces. 41. Krish, Krishna. Look at his face. He looks very worried on one side and on the other side he looks like he's deep in thought. Kali Kalmasa Nasini. I love the images. Gari Devi. And last but not least. Oof. Bhavatarini, Bhavatarini. That's what we're going with. Oh, 
Bavaha Tarn, Tarn, yeah, something like that. Something like that. Oh, gorgeous deck. It is a little fat though. Let's see. It's gonna be hard to shuffle because it's brand new. I did open the plastic out off of it because I wanted to be ready. Now I want to see if Kali is ready to talk to me. Is there anything, Kali, you would like to say? I feel like that one keeps trying to come out, but... No. Come and talk to me, Kali. I really want to hear you. Can you talk to me, Kali? Really want to know you. Yep, I'm going to serenade Kali. Serenade Kali. Will you talk to me now? Will you talk to me? Oh, I like the way they shuffle. Even though they're like bigger, I do like the way they shuffle. <laughs> I am not reading all those cards. These are long. I don't know. How many is that? Oof. Eighteen, thirty-five, and thirty-seven. I don't know. Maybe she wanted to say they're not like in order. In order. I don't know. Let's see if just one falls out because <laughs> these are like really long things. But let's see. Is this what you want to say to me? What's on the table? Is that it? Is that all you had to say? I'm gonna do it one more time. So mode it be. Yeah, I'm guessing that's what she wants to say to me. So she wants to say, Lalita Trepora Sandari, number 18. Let's read about her. I'm going to get tongue tied. First up, with luminous grace, she plays her ways into our hearts, softening hardness and despair, awakening the remnants of light, of love, of joy. No matter what you have experienced, your heart shall be cleansed and released from ugliness, sorrow, and pain. Negative karmic legacies will be cleared away. Our divine sister goddess invites you to recognize her golden restorative beauty shining within your heart. Cultivate that which is worthy of such beauty, for this is your essential nature. Gracefully release all else with dignity. The third of the Mahavida wisdom goddesses, Lalita Tripura Sandari, is the divine mother manifesting as light, playfulness, and beauty. In the Shakti Tantras, or scriptures of the divine feminine, there are two schools. One school celebrates Kali as a primordial origin of the universe, and the other worships Lalita as such. Yet they are two faces of the one divine mother. Lalita doesn't compete with Kali. She is her boon-giving brightness. Lalita's presence in a reading is a reminder to play. Her sadhana, or practice, asks us to cleanse and heal our minds so we do not become, con become consumed or overwhelmed by the suffering or ugliness happening in our world. I feel like this card is meant for me just because of what I've been doing. <sighs> Without denying the dark side... Of human nature, we can look through the inner eye to see what is happening at a spiritual level. If we look for the inner spiritual truth, we will find divine beauty. That is the courage, kindness, selflessness, generosity, love, and strength that humans develop and express in response to their problems. Lalita is the power to recondition the mind away from agony and into delight. This doesn't require changing the world, but rather seeing it differently. Instead of seeing humanity as victimized, weak, ego-driven, and wounded, we can affirm humanity as a collective of spiritually brave souls willing to incarnate and grow during a challenging time of spiritual, obscur sorry, spiritual obscuration on earth. Excuse me. There is divine beauty in such boldness of spirit. Internally, we shift from despair to awe, changing our chemistry along with our consciousness. As that takes place, we begin to vibrate energetically at a higher frequency. Challenges are, recon 
recognized, rec <laughs> what? challenges are recognized as means through which blessings can be activated. The mindset of the warrior fighting against darkness can shift into the mindset of the priestess, facilitating the increasing presence of spiritual light upon earth. Same world, same circumstances, but different approach, interpretation and response, which in turn leads to a different experience and future for us all. Sometimes we need the darkness, the feistiness of Kali and the warrior spirit. Yet at other times, the lightness of heart, the delighted mind, and the buoyant spirit are what will open the way for us. For life to happen, we need both night and day, winter and summer, and everything in between. Laulita is a reminder to give due honor to the brightness and light, especially if we have been dealing with a lot of darkness. In a reading, La Opita Trapura Sandari is a sign of good things intended for you. The ending of a truly difficult time is near. As a spiritual shift from the dark night of the soul into something of a golden era in your life, it is a promise of release into beauty and grace. Do your work to orient yourself to shift your inner being to be ready for her. What would it be like to dispense with worry and dwell within a continual infusion of golden grace? This is the way of Lalita. Be open to experiences of rest, pleasure, and beauty, which can elevate your frequency and help you discover new solutions to old issues. Lalita helps the mind break free from poverty, consciousness, and belief in lack. Inner healing and transformation manifest through her playful energies. We become able to find delight and joy once more. Tripura translates as three cities and refers to the triple goddess as a virgin, Bala, as a fertile woman, Sandari, and as a crone, Bharavi, Baharavi. In a reading, this oracle indicates a change so radical and profound that it is irreversible. A previous chapter of your life is truly closing and will not be reopened. This will be reason for celebration for the intervention of Lalita in our lives brings only delight, joy, happiness, and fulfillment. Whatever you need to release right now shall create the space for what is divine, divinely de destined for you to manifest through her grace. You have every reason to feel hopeful. If you have been struggling with poverty, consciousness, or have lost a sense of joy and gratitude for your life path, Lalita is important, important of heart healing and restoration of grace, light, and dignity in your heart. You shall awaken to your true inner beauty. You shall enjoy a change of pace and a release from intensity. Open your heart and orient your mind toward a golden era. So then they give you an invocation ritual. Say the following prayer to invoc invocation with one hand resting at your heart. And it says, Lalita Repara Sandari, golden goddess at play, joyful Jag Jagtambi, loving mother of the world and benevolent queen of the universe. You are all giving so generous and kind. I open my heart to you and wonder at your unwavering desire that I should simply be happy and free. Your generosity melts all resistance in your presence. I am as humble as a sage and as happy as a delighted child. You are my divine mother. You love me so much. On every level, I welcome your golden presence into my being, into my life, and the world. For the spiritual liberation of all beings. Jama Lalita Devi. See, sense, intend, or feel that you are moving deep into the spacious inner temple of your heart. There are a swirling golden light is reaching toward you. That light swirls elegantly, playfully, delighted in multiple directions. You sense it is powerful, intelligent, kind, and healing. The swirling golden light expands so it fills your entire energy field and then encapsulates the space around you. It captures all energetic streams of darkness, whisking them away from you, transforming them instantly into delight, happiness, and freedom. You are peaceful, protected, and blessed. You shine as a beautiful priest or priestess of her golden light. You, your luminous heart radiates her golden swirl and intelligence in all directions and through all dimensions for the spiritual benefit of all beings. Allow yourself to connect with the joy and delight of this. Finish with your hand in prayer and bow your head to the joy and light of the divine feminine in your deepest heart. You have completed your invocation ritual. I love that they give an invocation ritual and I'm going to leave because I did mess up a few words right there, but you know, you know, you know. So that 
is a beautiful, beautiful card. I have definitely been struggling with like darkness, doing lots of shadow work, trying to work through that, trying to get rid of the past. And I think this was a card of hope because sometimes, you know, we. I always try to look on the bright side of things. I always try to look at the silver lining, the good things. And sometimes you lose focus and you can never lose hope. You really can't because there's always something good to come. And I truly believe that. So I love this card. I could go on and on about it forever. But we have two other cards here because she had a lot to say. And something just fell from somewhere. And I don't know. There's nobody else in this room. So it kind of freaked me out. All right. Hi, Kali. You here with me? <laughs> she has a lot to say. All right. Then we have 35 Kalika Tantrika. Let's see what she has to say. I like this deck. It's very thorough. And I like, yes, it does. So it gives an invocation ritual after each one. So this next one, I'm just going to leave it there for you guys. If you want to snapshot it, I won't read the incantation rituals for them since there's kind of long. So this one says, our wild mother... <laughs> Let's read right. Our wild mother goddess overcomes duality, resting in the sweet spot of integration, healing, and creativity. Hmm, we're on the same path here. She facilitates the overcoming of tension and conflict, birthing sacred solutions and evolution into her greater bliss. Kalika Tra Tantrika is Kali, the tantric queen. She overcomes all karma realigns pathways when we have veered off course, reverses the momentum of negative uses of free will, and detaches draining energy cords, restoring us to full vitality. Her presence announces significant change, change and positive improvement in all aspects of your life, especially your spiritual life. See where we're going here? I love when all the cards like flow with each other. The Tantra of Kali is the teaching of the eminence of the goddess. Her appearance is a reading, in a reading, indicates a time when the feminine principle must be in the dominant position. This is not a declaration that the feminine is superior. It is equal to the masculine, yet different. It is in recognition that the feminine is the holding and birthing energy. To shift from one way paradigm or political structure the feminine must lead as kali she disrupts negative power structures and holds a space for something completely new to emerge from the rubble the simplest way to describe the eminence of the goddess is that it's the deep deep respect for intuitive knowing and action taken on the non-rational yet deeply insightful instincts of the heart this is not about being emotionally reactive there are multiple expressions of the sacred tantric inversion. Placing the sacred feminine in a leadership position and deconstructing, deconstructing patriarchy. We practice it when listening to our intuition with complete courage, rather than going against our inner knowing for the sake of logic. Another is reversing the flow of what has been generated. This may mean halting a path you wanted to travel but have now come to realize it is not honoring of your heart. It could be a breaking down of what has been established because it has become too restrictive and needs to be rebuilt in a new way or perhaps released altogether. Remember that which appealed to the caterpillar is not going to tempt the butterfly. Oh, I like that. As the soul evolves, our needs and desires often undergo a profound transformation too. So true. Tantric teachings resonate less with clean, tidy, and method methodical approaches and more with wild, spontaneous shamanic energies and that innately tuned to the responsive to life. The primal force of the feminine is moving you along your soul journey at present. To tune into the primal power requires loosening the mental grip over your life. Allow for more space, more flexibility. If your schedule is so tightly wound that every minute is accounted for, set the intention to slacken the reins. The feminine needs freedom. Feminine needs freedom. I love that. She cannot be crammed into minimal spaces and expected to thrive. If you try to control her, she will rebel. And when she is Kali, her rebellious topple kingdoms, it is possible. 
Her rebellions topple kingdoms. I said that wrong, sorry. It is possible to heal and transform even radically without evoking her wrathful nature if you are open to her guidance presence. Her wrath is love, so we need not fear it, but it can certainly be a welcome change of pace for powerful shifts to be able to happen with grace and ease. When Kali Tantrika arises in your reading, you are encouraged to listen to your gut and allow for wisdom to emerge. Act according to instinct and let go of methods that, that do not resonate with your heart. Even if your mind tells you that not following those methods will lead to failure, the Tantra of Kali is the practice of unconditional trust in the feminine. Her ways are unpredictable, apparently ever-changing, and when she manifests as Kali, if you try to pin her down and control her, she's likely to lop off the offending appendage. Instead, we submit to her, entering into the black void of possibilities and not knowing with the realization that even when we don't know what is going on, the divine feminine does. If we willingly open to her sacred knowledge, rather than try to impose our will and logic and desire upon her, she will show us what is going to work best. This is a time when the heart knowing must lead above the intellectual assessment of things. It is also when we are best moved by a greater gui guided intelligence. Excuse me. Rather than do doggedly sticking to a plan and trying to assert ourselves. The feminist is not as direct in her approach as the masculine. I said feminist. <laughs> The feminine is not as direct in her approach as the masculine. Her siege germany in darkness, her creative methods are not always seen, yet are powerful. The oracle brings encouragement that even though it seems like your will is being thwarted or you are not getting what you want right now, or you just wish you could have clarity and know your direction, you are still making progress. Things are coming together in the best way and something is growing that is aligned with the divine plan you were born to fulfill. You are encouraged to restore your inner energies and move when you feel inspired rather than thrusting forward in an attempt to make progress. The goddess knows what she's doing. Her actions will benefit you and all beings profoundly. Allow her to have her way. I love this. So the incantation ritual for that. I'm going to leave that right there. You guys can screenshot it if you wish. And then last but not least, I have a feeling this is all going to tie in because they're all basically saying the same thing. Change is coming. Get rid of your old past. That's what I've been doing. Change is coming. Trust in the process. Trust in your feminine energy. Stop listening to your mind. Go with your gut. And I've been, I've been so mad at myself because a couple of times... Very lately, I'm like, why didn't I listen to my gut? Why didn't I listen to my instincts? Why? 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 And that's what it's telling me. It's like, you need to listen to yourself, Stacey. Like, you are right. Stop doubting yourself. Stop doing it. Allow Kali to take the reins. Yes. And then we have Dama of Kali. Her every action is infused with loving purpose. And I love that that she's such a loving God. And about healing because that's me like I I feel like I was born to like help heal people in whatever way that may be it could be healing them with a laugh because they feel sad it could be anything just someone to talk to when they feel sad you know someone to cheer them up anything just a hug anything and I love that she has loving energy and I feel like that's why I connect with her and even though she was just like I knew about her but she was basically just introduced to me more recently I learned more about her I'm just like I really connect with her there's something about her it's just like she's the one she's the one I need to be working with and these cards just prove it because she's telling me everything I knew <laughs> but you need that little reassurance you know what I'm saying but anyway let me stop babbling all right her every action is infused with loving purpose every challenge and every opportunity in your life exists by her divine design her spiritual intelligence is within your heart. When you trust in your integrity and proceed according to your soul's values, you are trusting and empowering her to be at cause in your life. Everything that is happening is a part of how your prayers are being answered. A new order is to be established. You are being led into it. See? To honor the Dharma means to live according to genuine spiritual principles. What those principles are depends on your inner values. 
To live according to your values means living with integrity of being, conducting yourself according to an inner spiritual code. If you are not quite ready to take such responsibility or do not yet have the confidence to trust in your own values, work with an external moral code and attempt to align with that. Morality is like training wheels for the soul, imposing concepts of right and wrong. It is a top-down approach, mind first, then attempting to mold behavior accordingly. Spiritual integrity is a different approach. It does not ask what others think about a matter or, or how we will be judged for acting in a certain way. Rather, it inquires us to what resonates as the most spiritually aligned course of action. It considers how we can speak and act in such a way that those inner values are respected. Adherence to external moral codes is used in the earliest stages of development. But when a soul is ready to grow, being overly guided by morality can undermine spiritual progress. Morality can lead the soul into a state of psychological infancy, responded to externally imposed measures of conduct and aiming to avoid repercussions when a transgression is discovered by another. Or it may suffer with guilt and shame when a moral code has been violated, intentionally or not. In such a mindset, we hand power over to the collective that establishes the code, whether it be a religious, socio-economic, family, or political group, or the collective more generally. In following that code, we can adopt something of a childlike attitude to punishment and reward, hence the shock when bad things happen to good people. Those with the courage to grow into following an inner code take greater responsibility for their lives and actions. From greater responsibility arises greater freedom. And moving away from the crowd, such, sorry, such souls can forge their own path. This does not mean we act in a way despic despicable to others. Certainly, there are people who deny the power of a moral code, but also lack an inner connection to spiritual presence, and so move with an absence of integrity altogether. Such people create much pain for themselves and others as they assume a level of personal power within the spirituality, spiritual maturity to ensure that power is expressed bene benevolently. Why can't I? I can't say that word. Benevolent, benevolently. <laughs> benevolently? I can't say it. Our evolutionary process for strengthening our connection to Dharma or spiritual law transforms our relationship with ourselves, each other, and the world. As we grow spiritually and mature as a psychological lever, level, we naturally begin to cultivate our inner values, eschewing those we have been taught that no longer resonate. We learn the often painful lessons of what happens when we abandon our values to pursue that which society says is more important, control, Profit or personal gain at any cost. Social status through pos position of power, for example. We increasingly align ourselves with our values and adhere to them more courageously, evolving them according to inner resonance rather than outer effect. We realize that self-respect is more important than trying to control and manipulate outer events or other people. We are moved from an inner place rather than motivated by external rewards. As a consequence, it is spiritually safe for us to receive an abundance of material blessings because we know we will not try to sell our soul to obtain them. The Dharma of Kali brings the message that your most abundant success will manifest when you're aligned with your integrity. You do not need to put your faith in pathways or projects that do not resonate with your deeper spiritual knowing and values. Seeking the ways of the world to bring you what you need is only going to limit your spiritual progress and undermine the most abundant manifestation of your purpose. If you intuitively know that you need to engage with a more traditional worldly means of progress, then you can do so with your spiritual integrity intact and guiding you so you stay true to yourself in the process. As you are guided from within, you shall make the best progress. And then there's an invocation ritual to take a moment to settle your awareness. Oops. Settle your awareness on the flow of the breath. Is there something that has been troubling you? Speak to Ma Kali from your heart, then say the following prayer. And I'm going to leave that right there for you folks for tonight. So you can screenshot that if you would like. If you resonated with that last card. I already feel such a connection with this deck. I don't know how you guys feel about this, but 
I'm loving this deck. It is like very detailed. I love that there's an invocation ritual after for each card. I absolutely love that. I think that is so amazing to have. Um, and I'm, this makes me definitely want to do more readings. There's only certain decks I feel this energy with. And this is definitely one of them. Like, this is a beautiful deck. Um, spoiler alert, I may have bought one of my friends on here, this deck. So, just saying, somebody's going to be doing this with me pretty soon. Um, I am loving this. So, on that note, if you have stayed here this long and you are seeing this message right now since you sat through all my yabble dab dabbling over here i am going to do my last giveaway before the holidays and that is going to be of this deck shadows of light which i have shown you guys um the flip through and i also did a reading in a past video and i received this deck from um, I can't think. Was it Inked Goddess? No. Yes. No. Yes. <laughs> wow, why can't I think? Is no. I'm such a Jackie. I received this from um. I'm looking right at my thing. Goddess Provisions. My goodness, Stacy, where's your brain at? So, God's Provisions, my last um, unboxing. So, it is slightly used. You saw me use it that one day. <laughs> I did not put them back in order. I'm so sorry. But, um, I want to give this to a happy home. So, that and this little guy that was made by um, Sugar Muses, which is also a snake or a serpent, if you will. Um, this little package right here is yours if you want it and I will um Whatever this video because I know it's been taking like six seven eight ten twelve hours to upload a video Um, my one from this afternoon still isn't posted. So I don't know what's going on So from the time it says this is posted i'm gonna give 24 hours And i'll just have you do a little snake emoji on this video, which makes me know that you want this deck because I know some of you may have this deck so you may not want to do this giveaway so just put a little snake emoji that's all you have to do just a snake emoji you don't have to say anything else and 24 hours from when this video posts so say if it posts by midnight tonight by midnight tomorrow I will write down everybody's name that put a snake emoji on the comments in this video and I will pull from that and that's how we're gonna do that we'll do just a little little quick little giveaway and this won't be sent out until after Thanksgiving um I had five winners my last giveaway I sent two boxes out today I packed my third box I might send it out tomorrow morning actually I didn't think I was gonna do it till next week but if I make it before work I should be able to send it out tomorrow which leaves me my last two boxes, which I'm sending out the Tuesday after Thanksgiving. So this will be probably sent out either that Tuesday too or a day or two after that. I, I don't even know why I said Tuesday. Probably Friday of that week because I'm trying to, I don't even know what day I have off. Whatever day I have off, that's the day. I'll send it out. But those people will get an email anyway. I'm yambling because... I'm kind of tired, but I think I'm going to stay up and um, work on this a little bit more because I really liked this reading and I might play with some of my other decks because I'm in that kind of mood. <laughs> well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know if any one of these cards resonated with you. If it was Lalita Trepora Sandari or if the Kalika Tantrika one. Or if the Dharma of Kali resonated with you. If any of them at all. Maybe all three of them. I, I got something from all three of them to be honest. But that's just me. And I love this board. I like that three can fit. These are like fatter than usual. Like cards like these would fit. But it still holds them. And I love it. So yeah. I will leave you all. Have I hope you guys have a great night. It is like 10.30 right now. So I don't know when this is going to post. But yeah. Let me know. Sneak emoji. 
All right, my friends, have a great night. Peace and love. Stay sassy, my friends. Bye.